Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tesla Life number 158 for the 22nd of July, 2020. And guess what? It's earnings day call. So uh, that happened uh, just, just a few minutes ago. It finished off. But first, uh, let's introduce the panel who's with us uh, as normal. First of all, Mr. Casey Green joins us from the D.C. area. How are you today, sir? Doing pretty well. Next. Next week, get another supercharger review just in time. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't don't forget, uh, before this show's over, we'll probably get an update that you'll have to do again. So it is Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, let me check. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new one running around out there. <laughs> also joining us, Miss Patrick Connor from the West Coast. How are you today, sir? I'm good. And hello, Tesla Life fans. Today is a great day to be a Tesla fan. It's uh, some awesome stuff we'll be talking about as we help bring in a future free from fossil fuels. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, the sunshine is looking bright there in Oregon. Is that correct? It is. Yep. Lots of kilowatts raining in. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, the, today, of course, the, the big news uh, that just hit the press uh, just moments ago was the uh, quarter two earnings call has just completed with uh, Elon and execs uh, answering some questions and uh, updating us to uh, what has happened uh, over the past quarter, which, of course, was uh, a trying quarter uh, with Tesla having to shut down uh, their factory uh, for about five weeks uh, in that quarter. But uh, the amazing news, the, the, the first headline, I guess, is that Tesla ended up being profitable for quarter two. That, and that, of course, pushes them to their fourth quarter of profitability in a row, something that's never been done in company history. So another first uh, that Tesla has not only gotten a profit in a, a troublesome quarter, but now that's their fourth quarter. So a full year of profitability um, uh, since last year at this time. So uh, fantastic. Unbelievable news. Uh, I know that uh, I uh, and, and others were uh, kind of worried uh, that yeah. uh, they may not quite make that profitability because, of course, the, the shutdown uh, was in all our minds with five weeks is an awful long time to have it. So, again, based on our conversation last week, I'm going to have to say that Tesla is sandbagging all of us. These guys, <laughs> these guys only need like two and a half weeks to be profitable in a quarter. It's obvious now. But, right. uh, yeah, all they need is the last two and a half weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so That's when they that do is, it all. That is shocking. So uh, we all had uh, listened uh, through the, uh, the uh, earnings call, and uh, – what did you guys think? What 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 picked up? Uh, uh, let's start with Patrick. What what were some of the things that uh, highlighted for you? Um, I've got a whole list. I don't know if we want to go through it, but uh, this that point you just made was the big one. The street consensus was that they were going to be uh, by a few million dollars miss profitability, and they blew that away with a hundred and four million dollars in profitability. So that was awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, so that was that was a that was certainly a big takeaway. Um, Casey, what was your what was your uh, moment that uh, you picked out? Yeah, as I said, uh, you know, Elon said that you know we faced numerous challenges this quarter. Was his, his what he said um, in the uh, the the paperwork that they gave us uh, the the report? It yeah. said they picked their site. And on the call, when, I, when they didn't say where the site was, I figured Elon. Thank you for standing by. <laughs> I figured that Elon was. <laughs> yeah, hey, Elon it's replaying right to... now. If you want to listen to it, <laughs> exactly. I figured that Elon was going to, you know, make a make a show of it, and and he did. Where yes. is it? So the next Giga Factory. Drum Thank roll, me. please. Or Terra Factory, Texas, outside Austin. Austin out of Austin. Yeah, it, yep. it was announced today by Elon that uh, Austin has won the the Terra Factory sweepstakes, <laughs> and uh, they will be placing. Uh, uh, and actually, didn't he mention something that uh, they've already started work on getting it placed as of last yes. weekend? Yes. So uh, the the uh, the mines are working on uh, what has to be done in what order and how fast they can get that plant to be started. And and yeah. uh, and he didn't take Tulsa out of the running. They just didn't win the factory that one. So 
It looks right. like that's whatever they're doing next, Tulsa is probably a shoe in as long as he nobody had a else lot of nice Tulsa. things to say about Tulsa, definitely. Yeah. And for the Texas plant, Austin plant, um, they mentioned they're going to have that there's a river that runs through their property. They're going to put in a public park there. It'll be accessible to anybody, trees, birds, fish. Uh, so that was kind of cool. They're going to make a community area there. Yeah, walking trails. Yeah. So uh, that'll be that'll be nice uh, setup uh, for people that live in the area or are visiting. Um, the the other thing that I found interesting during the entire earnings call is that it really was a call for employment. Uh, yes, right. They were they were asking for employees for almost all aspects of uh, Tesla's uh, multiple businesses that they run. So so they were talking about insurance. They were talking about uh, the uh, the energy factory. They were talking about, uh, of course, uh, Tesla itself. They were talking about uh, semi. They were talking about the different areas and plants are being built. Germany, uh, Shanghai. They were talking about uh, supplier. Like they were yeah, he was really hiring suppliers. <laughs> it was it was really going out all out trying to advertise that if if you're doing anything in the Tesla. Uh, stratosphere we need employees we need good quality employees we need people that want to think we want people that want to change things in industries that aren't changing fast enough for them yes so yeah even nickel money. Cool mine. nickel money yeah uh, um, uh, that's right he, he put a call out hoping it would go to all miners that they <laughs> want they want ethically sourced uh nickel in in vast volumes, and Tesla would sign a multi-year contracts uh, to to get that nickel. So obviously, obviously they 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 want to build more batteries than they have supply to do so. They they sky's the limit. It seems they just want they want to collect more and more resources to keep pushing out batteries. Yep. Right, and, then, uh, and multiple times they said self constraint was their limiting factor. Yes. And when people said, "Well, what about demand?" It was like, "It's not a demand problem." How many times do I have to say this? I need sales. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but then then the uh, news with the uh, I don't know if this was really on the call, but then the uh, the the Giga the the Terras the Gigas whatever you want to call them, Shanghai and and Berlin are, are progressing way ahead of schedule. It's just pretty cool to see. Like, yeah. So they said three factories opening up in the next 12 to 18 months. And yeah. I have Berlin and Austin. And what's the third one? Something down the street from Fremont, maybe? Uh, I, <laughs> I Did they mention the third one? No. Nope. They didn't they say did what a third one is. Uh, were they referring to the factory think... being the Model Y at Shanghai, the new that's, factory? That's how I interpreted it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, but, yeah. but you're right, though. They have that Microsoft speak about them. They may... They may have actually slipped that there's another one out there. <laughs> maybe maybe it is Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, he did mention that they were very impressed with the Tulsa. Uh, Tesla, uh, Tulsa. Tulsa. Uh, <laughs> Tulsa, not Tesla. They were very impressed uh, with their presentation uh, and said that they would definitely be in the running for future uh, expansion. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, the people in Austin are... Man, they got to be happy uh, to to land that plant. Uh, five thousand workers, uh, and just about five minutes, uh, five or ten minutes from outside of downtown, and five or ten minutes from the Austin airport. Um, yeah. And and as mentioned, uh, right on the on the Colorado River. Um, so uh, that'll be easy to pinpoint where that is. Uh, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if. If uh, the land uh, starts to transform uh, shortly, are we going to see? Are we going to see uh, land clearing happening? Uh, they're they're definitely going to want to move quickly, uh, as we talked about last week. Uh, and of course, the prediction, Patrick, your prediction of of the earnings call being the place to announce uh, when uh, where the Gigafactory was going to be placed was bang on the money. So. Uh, Good, uh, uh, good prospecting for you. Yeah. So yeah. So hey, if you're like Tesla kid Grunheind uh, in Berlin, if we need one of those in Austin now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a drone and you live near Austin, <laughs> we have a task I, for you. I you can have I an have Austin YouTube feeling, channel. <laughs> I have a feeling that there are a number of people gearing up their their flying drones right now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, with, cool with time lapse. With the um, the preview we saw of Austin, they said that that was. 
uh, uh, closed quarry or something? It, it yeah, already concrete. had been used in concrete. Okay. Mm -hmm. So would we even notice um, before they start prepping the foundation? Would we even notice the change? Because it's, if it's, if it's already prepped. like a construction site of sorts, uh, yeah. would we would we notice that they start clearing things? Or do they even require it to, well, uh, to clear well, things? They need to prep, but would we see it? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I, start I, those I, maybe in, they though. could just make all their own concrete first. Be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Before they demolish the concrete factory, first make some. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see if, uh, if, uh, if they start uh, in earnest right away. Uh, or if there is some sort of a, you know, a planning stage that they have to go through that uh, maybe a couple of weeks will not will not see much uh, activity. But I am sure there will be people right now are probably ascertaining exactly where that location is, getting the address, going out there, taking photographs or video. I'm sure that's all going to happen. And when we get uh, news of that information, we'll certainly share it uh, on our uh, channel uh, through our YouTube site, uh, The Tesla Life Numero One, and of course uh, through the Twitter feed at The Tesla Life. So follow along there, and as things happen, uh, we'll publish them and uh, share them with the group. Right. Cheers. Yeah, that's where the Cybertruck's going to be made and the yep. semi truck. So those are both big, big uh, products for them. And uh, I'm glad they're so finally going to start the factory because uh, there's a lot of people who are drooling for that cyber truck. And if they don't start making it soon, they're going to have a riot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The riot is growing, too, uh, with more and more reservations. Absolutely. Right. So, so we heard uh, Berlin comparing themselves to how quickly China went up. So I'm curious if if Austin will be now pitted against the other two. Oh, yeah. yeah Tesla doesn't want to do anything slow. I mean, yeah. They, moves move fast move that's that's their motto yep. yeah absolutely so patrick maybe uh hit a couple of the points that you have uh jotted down from the from the call yeah um so um one of musk's opening statements was that the auto industry in general was down 30 percent, and even with that uh tesla was still up so that was that's a big deal that really shows you what kind of cars, when things are tough, do people want? And it's not the old ice burners. So that was that was a big one. Um, do you want to keep going or do you want to comment? Yeah, on? let's, let's yeah, keep going. going. We'll okay, comment right. as we go along. Okay, cool. Uh, solar pricing has been adjusted. They now have a low cost guarantee. And they are 30% cheaper than the average solar. For their uh, retrofit, it's a $1.49 per watt. And then... They were talking about solar. Then they said one little thing that really caught my ear. Uh, it's going to get better later this year. Uh, well, I didn't catch that. that. Yeah, uh, which really made me wonder, well, you just lowered your prices. You just <laughs> why, why would you Osborne yourself like that with that statement? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, they, they, just, they also just adjusted the prices twice. Like that mm -hmm. happened within mm -hmm. a week and a half. Uh, there was a, another adjustment. Uh, one of the cheaper systems even dropped cheaper. Um, right. And uh, a couple of the larger systems went up slightly. Uh, slightly. So, so there was a there was a, a double modification on pricing just recently. But then yeah. they still got their price guarantee. So if you find something cheaper on the big side, they'll come back down again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, they also mentioned that traffic light and stop sign features were released, and that allowed them to recognize some of the revenue that they have to hold back for full self driving. And uh, and then Elon commented how he's driving the alpha version of this software and how uh, now on his commutes, the number of interventions just keeps getting lower, even when he's going through construction zones and other stuff. So that's he said that's the reason he's confident that full self-driving will be able to be deployed by the end of the year, because it's what he's already using today and he's seeing great results from it. Right. And that's that's really interesting. To hear that uh, that uh, you know obviously the head of the company is is going to be using the the latest and greatest, uh, but to hear that the instances of uh, having to uh, take over from uh, the autopilot has been dropping, and that uh, is a very small amount of occasions that they're they're working on to uh, complete. I guess the only question is 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 beyond Elon's commute, 
are there other places <laughs> that people will want to go get higher that, priority? That, that, there, that there could be other issues going on uh, <laughs> uh and and i i would i would know that that anyone working on autopilot would know elon's commute inside out all the different ways he could possibly take the work and uh i am sure that they have planned uh for almost any scenario in those routes <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, they might my, get a little own, more attention. Yeah, I've been seeing in my own testing that the uh, the autopilot is, even in these little point releases that they keep giving us, it is advancing. And uh, I was watching a couple of uh, right-hand drive Model 3s uh, today, and they are making similar improvements. Uh, they're blowing through stoplights like mine used to do, though, because they don't have stoplight control beta. But uh, like one of them, there was a car just sitting there, and there was a little thin lane line showing that it shouldn't run over the van and it shifted over and didn't hit the van oh nice <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so mark you said obviously the head of the company is going to be doing this sort of testing i don't know that at other car companies that's true i don't know uh, how many other ceos are also yeah. alpha testers no i i, I you're right uh, i meant uh tesla with elon at the helm uh, yes. It just it just makes sense that he is going to be all over this because it's his baby. It's right. his you know it's his uh, as said during the earnings call. It is the the greatest uh, I guess uh, increase in in profit per car uh, that uh, they he can see in the foreseeable future is uh, going from a non autopilot car to an autopilot car with the uh, hardware already baked in. I yeah. suspect that to get the other CEOs in their cars. Uh, Right before a demo, like the day before, and then in the demo when they're showing it off on the camera. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. They have someone handhold them through, to show them all the things that they need to show off to the audience, and that's about as well as they know it. Yeah. So speaking of full self driving, that that I just looked up what uh, Musk had said at that point, and uh, here here are my notes. Full self driving is the most important thing for the company. It will be a significant step change in vehicle values and a major increase in utilization. You can expect more fun things to be coming that are also focused when in full self-driving mode. Software is one of Tesla's big advantages. So that talks about both the software for full self-driving and then the software of things that you can do in the car once you're in full self-driving mode. Is that exactly. when you were in that rant on video games? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. I think that's when they <laughs> talked about that. Yeah, and, and he, he, they talked a little bit about the, the video games being they've just dipped their toe in the water. They're trying to yeah. see what works, what kind of doesn't work, and what uh, what uh, is going to be uh, valuable for the people that are in those cars not driving them. What kind of business they're going to be doing, what kind of entertainment they're going to want, and how they're going to share in that through the car's uh, uh, connectivity. Right. Yep, and they already sell premium connectivity, uh, so that's that would be a revenue source if they're, if people are using it to stream various content yeah yeah uh they also talk more about full self-driving and that they are transitioning the system what they have now they said was 2d or two and a half d and that it has some time elements but they're not very well synchronized and instead they're going to be moving to a full 4d view the analogy was like people don't drive by looking at a series of photos Instead, you have a full real-time movie running, and that's what you can use to make driving decisions. And that's what their, their new full self-driving system is going to have, and that's going to be rolling out later this year. So whenever there's a big change like this, you often have a, a setback in features. And then, and then as the new system uh, catches up, you actually are able to achieve a, a higher level. But uh, so... Uh, they didn't mention this, but uh, I just know through software development things that I've seen before. It's a series of S curves, and the new one has a higher potential, but but it often starts out below where the previous one was. So that's just the the way things go. So this new system, though, if it allows them to to get to their ultimate goal, it's absolutely the right thing to do, even if there's a temporary back step to get there. And we've exactly. seen this. And we've seen this with every uh, release of theirs, uh, from autopilot. Uh, the new car didn't even have proper cruise control compared to the old car. With autopilot, uh, then they added in um, traffic aware cruise control. Then they added in auto steer. But each time yeah, they added how long in, did it, it take step. to get the auto wipers to work? <laughs> oh, I'm talking autopilot yeah. one still. I haven't even moved oh, autopilot okay. two. <laughs> okay, yeah. 
<laughs> and then, then with autopilot two, it was less capable than autopilot uh, one. And then two point five didn't even have cruise control again, even though autopilot two point had cruise control. <laughs> right. And uh, on, on this most recently, uh, with the stop sign and traffic light control beta, uh, up until uh, this past week, anybody outside of the early access program couldn't even go above the speed limit on on most roads. And, uh, and and now that is starting to, to roll out that you can go five over on any road. But uh, right now, if you're not one of the ten uh, percent of the people who's who's got that early release, uh, you're looking at uh, you got to get lucky for it to let you to go faster than the exact speed limit on the road that it thinks the speed limit is. Right, but this is the part of Tesla's culture. They have a a, a vision, and they're going to do what it takes to get there. Where oh, yeah. With- with other companies, if they said, no, you can't take away cruise control or, or some other feature, people expect that. They would have instead then spent another six, nine months before they roll it out. And that six to nine months, sure, it gets you those features, but it also delays getting to the goal. And the goal is the focus. It's the North Star. It's the only yeah. thing they're looking at. And if that if the fastest way there includes some regressions, then they're going to take it. Right. Right. And then the traditional way is that, yeah, it's got the same features as the old one, but it's not any better. It's just using the new technique. It's cheaper. It's whatever. But right. once once they unleash it on the Tesla way, like as soon as my car gets that next release where I don't have to go with the speed limit anymore, it's going to be more stable when it goes forward. Not just, I mean, because the reason for the caution is just to handle edge cases and to help the humans pay more attention to help with the training of the system. Yeah, it's all like uh, the analogy of walk before you run. So make yeah. sure that you've got everything solid before you get into a situation where you're upscaling from walking to running, where things can go very badly much quicker uh, if you haven't got all the uh, T's crossed and the, and the I's dotted. Well, yeah, just like a baby, you know, when they're crawling, they can crawl like uh, quite a clip. But when they go to walk, they're going to walk slower than they crawl yeah. For, yeah. at first. That's a good analogy. If you made it a uh, new and improved human, uh, but they start as a baby, <laughs> of course the baby's not going to be as fast as an adult, even if it's the new and improved 2.0 faster human. Yeah, yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one on my list was they talked about how permit closures slowed down. Uh, the permit offices were closed, so that slowed down their solar deployment, uh, which makes sense. There's the, uh, Those are going to be county-based, and a lot of counties' offices were shut down during this period, and some still are. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one was that Tesla has an agile culture, and this allowed them to shift many of their operations during these unprecedented times. So, uh, yeah, we just talked about how they're willing to do what it takes, and uh, that, that that applies to this as well. Okay, we can't be in the cars with people. We have to do touchless delivery. All right, how are we going to do that? Roll it out next week, not roll it out in six months. Uh, so that was that was just a, a great uh, look into how they do things. Yeah, plus the cars were already equipped to handle this. Uh, it's just they never had any uh, push to go do it. Like uh, mm-hmm. the old way worked, but now it's like I can't expose my employees to these unknown uh, customers. All right, so I've already got full control of the car while it's in store mode. Lock it down, park it out front, lock the keys underneath, because on the Model 3 and the Model Y, the keys don't talk to the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've already got your your phones already set up, even before delivery. You can see it as shadow mode uh, on, on, on normal times. And now it's just like, hey, your delivery time is open, and the app just opens up. You don't have to wait for somebody to go and click on something to let you control your car. Exactly. Yeah. You open it up, you grab your keys, sign the paperwork, leave it on the desk, or DocuSign, depending on what stage you're in, and mm-hmm. drive away. Yeah, I'm getting a touchless service on Monday. Um, I'm finally getting my winter tires off. <laughs> <laughs> Since the COVID lockdown happened, I'm like, eh, I'm not driving much anyway. What do I care? Um, but, uh, uh, my, time uh, to put them back on. Yeah, yeah like you're only a couple <laughs> months away now. Like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe I should just ride it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've also got a service uh, in August, but they won't guarantee me a loaner car, and I'm not going to get in an Uber. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I told them, I'm going to keep the appointment, but if you don't have a car, I'm going to I'm gonna delay it at the last minute. Sorry. It's your own logistics, not my problem. <laughs> yeah. um, but I did also find out that my, my region has a mobile tire service like, like California does, so uh, I'm... The only question now is when I order my tire rack, uh, 
Am I getting it brought to the house? Or am I going to drop it off at Tesla? What? Yeah. Because I'm not yeah, going to pay Tesla prices for Tesla wasn't tires. An option for me, and uh, that's too bad. That would have been nice. Yeah. Yeah. They've done a lot of stuff with mobile service, so I, I can't complain. And uh, so um, yeah, that, they got to have a special vehicle for that because the the mountain balance machine is is, is a large. big machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, it won't yeah. Fit in the back of a Model S or Model X. <laughs> well, they have talked about how service is uh, expanding, and they've added mobile rangers. So maybe this is something we'll we'll get up here in my region soon. Probably so. Yeah. Okay. Next on my list was uh, in the Q and A. They were asking about what products will Tesla have next. And that was a good question. Yeah. Um, Musk danced around it. He didn't give an exact answer. He said, "We we will do the obvious thing," and. It will make sense that we'll have a more compact car at some point, but I don't want to announce anything in this forum yet. It's too soon. So that was Do interesting. Yeah. So he, <laughs> uh -huh. he kind of kind of alluded to the world car, but mm -hmm. uh, indicated that they would do what's right. They would do what uh, what timing they believe is right. Right. And yeah, it's not exactly a surprise because in the last earnings call, he 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 told us about it when they announced the China Design Center. Right, they even uh, were crowdsourcing designs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't at least go into that. And then in, a, in another question later, he talked about how someone was asking about their profitability. And they lowered prices when they could have kept them the yeah. same and, and had higher profitability. And uh, Musk said, our cars cost too much right now. And uh, yes, we want to be profitable, but profitability is not our goal. Our goal is to advance electrification of transportation, and that means we need to make the cars affordable. You can put value in them, but if people can't afford them, it doesn't do you any good. So they want to make a more affordable car, and they want to reduce the price of their existing cars. So uh, that was that was really cool to hear, that uh, it's not about let's just make as much money as we can, uh, which is what I've heard from many other CEOs, uh, the maximizing uh, shareholder value, which really just means exploiting customers as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was it was good to hear that that's that is still the mission and continues to be the mission from what we've heard in the past is still in present. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like if their goal is the 25 percent, as soon as they hit the 25 percent and they start exceeding it, they immediately shave the price. That, that's really awesome. Yeah, yeah, as it should be. Yeah. Yep. Any other points, Patrick? Uh, I've just got a ton of them here. Um, well, let's let's not take them all, but uh, okay. <laughs> let's take let's take a, let's take two more that are standouts, if you could. Um, there was a question about Dreadnought, and they talked about how they're getting better at building factories with each with each one that they build. Um, this one was interesting. They uh, uh, they talked about Model Y in Berlin that they have plans to significantly redesign it it'll look the same on the outside but they have looked at all the manufacturing challenges that they have run into making it in fremont and uh in shanghai with they're starting that they're going to re completely redesign it and this one i thought was really cool they said that um their manufacturing guys are not just the designers make something and they give it to manufacturing and manufacturing has to figure out a way to make it. No, the manufacturing guys are the ones to say to scale it. This is what you need to do design people. And this is what you need to do. And, um, uh, Musk's quote there was that, uh, manufacturing doesn't just have to eat, uh, eat the turd sandwich that design shoves in their <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah. They have the ability to reply back and say, you're, what you're making is stupid. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And, yeah, and if he, you really want to get to high volume, you have to have that feedback. Yeah, exactly. and you've he, got to he have put, all parties involved uh, put in their two cents as to what it's going to take and what it's going to look like. Yeah, and he put it in, out there that the one-piece casting machine for the Model Y rear end is uh, is already being installed in Fremont right now. Uh, what Patrick and I were talking before the show, it, it appears that it's already installed in China. Uh, so it was interesting he didn't call that out, but he did call it out for Fremont. And, uh, well, there there was a story that we reported on uh, in in Shanghai about a stamping machine. It was yeah. labeled not a not a casting machine. So I'm wondering if they have a stamping and a casting. Um, yeah, and then he called it, it a, a casting press, which yeah. now you're mixing them both. So I I, I don't know. It, I don't know. It, enough it is about both. 
Yeah, uh, I, I was I was on the manufacturer's website and um, didn't understand everything I was looking at, but it was casting press is what they called it as well. Mm. Yeah. So there but, is a um, combination of terms, anyways, uh, by the manufacturer. Yeah. But okay. The uh, the the changes to the uh, German Model Y. I'm curious if that's what we were expecting from the get-go with the the one wire and the well two wires really and the uh just all the stuff we thought we would see when sandy tore into the uh existing model y and didn't right see. right Cer- well certainly as as mentioned even in the earnings call tesla is of course learning all the time based on its manufacturing based on its experience and they are modifying not only the cars themselves but the design uh the manufacturer uh, the automation of the manufacturing of those cars is is an ongoing. Uh, everything's everything's on a floating table. It's moving mm-hmm. based on efficiencies that they can they can realize uh, by making those changes. And uh, it, it appears that it would be a very interesting place to work because the table's all re- always moving. Uh, they're trying to get better at so many things all across the board. That standardized uh, production or standardized way of doing things probably doesn't exist in a lot of manners. It, it's it's a it's a shuffle based on better efficiency, uh, better product, uh, better better cost savings uh, across the board. Yeah, right. Very agile, and this is one of the reasons that when other car manufacturers come out with uh, a vehicle that has say a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, it gets 210 miles of range. Because the Tesla is iterating constantly, they make it three percent better here, two percent better there, and they're not waiting for the next model year to do that. Uh, they're not saying, "Oh, we have to retrofit this to before we can do that there." No, if it's better and you can design it better for a new factory, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, a good yeah. example of that is the uh, the model Model S. It, it went over 400 miles of charge. And then within weeks, oh, it now is charging at 250 kilowatts. They didn't put mm-hmm. them in the same release, even though that would make perfect sense. Another right. item from the earnings call was the uh, talk about the Tesla Semi and going into production. And mm-hmm. Tesla, Tesla uh, again, reiterating that the first units that we're going to build are going to be used for us. And they're going to be on the road between Fremont and Sparks, Nevada, they're going to be hauling stuff uh, so that we are sure that that vehicle is achieving what we believe it will achieve. And as Patrick had mentioned earlier about those efficiencies, they're always shaving those efficiencies, making them better, making it that the, 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 the battery that's going to be in the truck is going to be able to drive the truck longer with a full haul as opposed to you know uh, losing some of those efficiencies by a motor, by a by a, uh, the tires themselves. Uh, he went into a number of different pieces uh, of the vehicle, indicating that just those fractions of percentages that can be better will allow that truck to outperform what they advertised it at. Yeah, another good example of that is the Model 3 and Model Y battery pack. Uh, it, it appeared that they were built off of the same recipe, but apparently they were actually different battery packs. And they won't be for long. <laughs> They're going to be the same battery pack for real. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, Patrick, was there anything else on the semi about actual numbers? I didn't hear any numbers mentioned at all. All I, I heard was that they were going to use the first number of units themselves as Tesla. Right. That, that was all I heard. Uh, and, and that's also something that we've predicted on this show in the past, that they would be their first customer. They would dog food it and they would uh, drive between those two sites and that's exactly what they're doing. Yep. Yeah. They also let it, um, not on this call, but they let it out that they have more than the two semis that we've seen. And uh, and they're building them by hand right now. And so they're going to very quickly transition this to being built in a, in a real factory. But they're going to use those hand units for themselves as well. Yeah. So uh, be on the look if you're in California. Uh, in between Nevada and uh, California, there's going to be some, uh, some uh, road trucks uh, that... Uh, are going to be uh, working for Tesla, hauling uh, hauling goods back and forth between the factories. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the last point from the call uh, I, I want to make is uh, they talked about their insurance product, and right now they said it's a uh, version zero point nine, and that it's only available in California, and they are looking at 
they they didn't want to take that one and, and and deploy it into other states. They wanted to improve it first. So that's what they're looking at doing right now. And uh, they were talking about how traditional insurance just looks at people as demographics. And what they want to do is collect a lot of telemetry on you as an individual. And so you're not going to get uh, insurance rates just based on your gender and age group, but but how you drive. And not only that, when you get your monthly insurance bill, it'll come with, uh, here's the things we noticed about how you're driving. And if you want to lower your rate, uh, change these behaviors. So if you want to drive fast and reckless, that's great. You're free to. Um, you know, the police might have something else to say about that, but, you're, <laughs> but your insurance company will let, uh, certainly allow it, and uh, but you'll be charged appropriately for it. So that was kind of an interesting, they want to take it and make it highly individualized. And, and of course, you have to opt into that. And uh, if you don't want that data collected on you, you know, pick another insurance company because there's, there's still plenty out there on the market. So yeah, that was, uh, and they said they want to have that into a handful of states by the end of the year. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's pretty quick, actually, uh, to, to start to roll that out a little bit. I think yeah. on day-to-day, -day, I'd be fine with that because I'm almost always an autopilot. But uh, I'm hoping there's a, uh, a button to tell them you're off track. That way, when I'm on the, <laughs> when I'm on the track, I'm not getting charged for driving like a jerk. <laughs> but yeah. is, is, there any, is there any real difference between what they're proposing and someone that has those little dongles that plug into your car and record your yes. hard brakes, your hard accelerations, your, uh, it's, it's recording from the car. Is, is this yes. the same type of thing no. or is this different? Because those those things, like when you drive an EV with those things, they always assume that you're accelerating too hard and you're braking too hard. And this will be able to read your throttle, oh, sorry, the lightning pedal position and, and tell you how, how, you know, that was 12%, that was 50%. Uh, you got this many Gs uh, per the car's airbag system, you know, versus, you know, just the little uh, mercury switch floating around in there. And, and then they can, they can, also see stuff like, hey, you, you enabled autopilot. Autopilot actually did the hard break, not, not the customer. Whereas the dongle is just going to see, oh, well, every time this guy goes past an overpass, he slams on the brakes. <laughs> I, I predict, right. though, I predict that uh, a number of Tesla drivers are going to have a problem with that because, of yes. course, we might drive a little bit spirited at times <laughs> because the car gives us that thrill. The car is able to do that. The the quick launches, the uh, uh, the great handling of the car, uh, the, the you know the taking of a winding road because we know the car can do it and has done it. It's that's but, uh, going to be a bit of a problem if they're I, monitoring all this stuff. I think that will be factored in uh, because you know they know the car can do it. They they're hiring their own uh, actuaries and. And, and and they've also got the data that shows that yes, the customer may be spirited in the corners, but oh, only one out of a thousand customers slides off the cliff. Whereas, <laughs> <laughs> whereas the rest of the cars, three out of twelve. And that happened last cliff. month, so most likely this guy's not going off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, and there's my. a difference between taking off from a light fast versus going over the speed limit, right? Right. So. And somebody weaving in and out of the lanes, then they can also tell if you're using your turn signal. If you're weaving in and out of the lanes, the car knows it will tell on you. And if yeah. you're using your signal, at least, if they are, well, he's at least signaling. And even though he's driving fast and weaving in and out of traffic, he's doing it safely ish. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think some of us are going to get burned on this. Like, I do, really do. I really I'm, think I'm hoping, because, I'm hoping they... because we might be bending some of the rules as oh, we're driving sure. these cars. Uh, I know sure. I am, to be honest. I, I know I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so here, so having the car squeal on everything that you do uh, beyond a, a certain speed limit or things of that nature, uh, that's that's going to be a problem. I'm hoping they give you a live quote before you hit yes by it now. So they'll be like, hey, for the year, this is what you did. And for your last three months, you were doing this. And for the last month or two weeks, this is what we think your bill will be. Mm. Do you want to sign yeah. up or not? Yeah, so you'd have to opt in to let them collect that data for some period, and then and then do this analysis. That would and be then, interesting. Yeah, I Absolutely. wonder if you if you turned on the Model Three Model Y camera crash data if it is already. Well, no, because that's anonymous. I was gonna say, I wonder if that's already right. part of it, but it's anonymous, so they can't do that. Yeah, that's actually a concern. You definitely have to consider privacy, uh, because now a lot of stuff is collected anonymously. But if they have to tie it to your insurance, it would not be. And then does that mean it could be subpoenaed? 
you know, lots of lots of legal and personal questions there that I'm not qualified to answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's it for the earnings call. There's still a ton of information. Certainly, you can uh, follow us along again on our Facebook and Twitter feeds uh, as the week goes along. I'm sure we'll be adding stories to what uh, we heard today. Okay. But uh, on with a few other news notes. Uh, the first thing I'm going to get to is so I don't forget about it is uh, the Boring Company did confirm on its website uh, that in the Las Vegas loop, they will be operating S3 uh, and X vehicles. Uh we don't know why the why was not mentioned. Uh, <laughs> why no why? <laughs> but it was not mentioned. Uh, specifically, it was the S, the 3, and the X. And also on the uh, the website, they've revealed some station designs uh, for ones that are completely buried, uh, ones that have open roofs, and ones that are surface uh, stations. Uh, so you can go to the Boring Company's website and, and view some of that information uh, as it was changed recently. Uh, just in the last couple of days to show that. You know what's missing from these renders? What's that? The, the only item that we had concrete information on. The trash can. The trash can. Yes. Trash can. <laughs> yes. The, the specifically placed and, and uh, dimensionalized <laughs> trash cans. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. They're not in the new render shots for some some strange reason. How's it on the floorboard? It was, it, was probably do that. From, it was probably from us putting too much emphasis on it on the last show that we talked about the trash cans. Hey, but, uh, let's keep talking about the trash can. Get it out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and another story this week, of course, uh, along with what was uh, anticipated, the stock market had a bit of a run on the Tesla stock. And, of course, it's had an unprecedented run over the past, what, now four weeks? It's yeah. just gone ballistic. Uh, so one of the closed uh, at fifteen uh, ninety two and thirty three cents, and currently yeah. in after hours we're looking at sixteen fifty five forty nine. Okay, nice. Yeah. So uh, based on that type of information that's been happening for the past four weeks, uh, a, a an ex short seller uh, was interviewed in a Tesla Rati uh, article uh, when they were talking about you know what what has basically happened with Tesla within the shorter community. And uh, this uh, shorter went on record to say that he wouldn't bet against them anymore. He's done. Uh, he 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 himself is divested uh, in those uh, in those short uh, uh, I guess puts or whatever they call them. Uh, he is outside of it at this point, and he's saying to the shorter community, "You know what? It's time to stop uh, <laughs> because this is, this is not going anywhere good for you. People that are in just covering their bet." Uh, along for the ride as they think it's going to rebound down, uh, he's believing that they're in for another world of hurt, that uh, this that this uh, Tesla momentum uh, cannot be stopped. Now, it's curious. He still believes that Tesla is somehow misleading the market, but yet he also believes that Tesla now has enough support in the market that they will not uh, succumb to lack of funds at any time in the foreseeable future. He believes that their 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 borrowing terms and their ability to get money from the market uh, really has unlimited reach at this point, and and they can't be stopped uh, in typical ways that some companies uh, can be. So uh, his 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 advice to other shorters is get out while you can because it's not going to get any better for you. I liked his quote. It's one thing to bet on Elon Musk, but it's another thing to bet against him. This guy specializes in pulling rabbits out of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, the Tesla rabbit uh, is out of the hat, definitely. Uh, and as we've said on this show previous times, with this fourth or second quarter uh, uh, profitability and fourth quarter in a row, man, the sky's even getting bluer as time goes yeah. along because because Tesla was in the clear previously. Even without this victory in this quarter, I still believe that they were well on their way uh, to to uh, more profitable days. But with this uh, rabbit out of a hat on this uh, quarter two, man, I, I don't think there's anything this company cannot do. It's it's amazing. Yeah, and then, the, and, and, the shorter community has just never really understood Tesla. They uh, say, oh, it's an electric car company and other ca car makers are going to start making electric and therefore they're going to fail. 
And that's not at all what Tesla is. They are a technology company that makes cars and they are getting a lot better at making cars much faster than car companies are at becoming technology companies that can make uh, connected cars and electric cars. So it's and a software. completely yeah. different. Yeah, they're, yeah. The, the software is absolutely one of Tesla's strengths and one of the weaknesses of the other automakers. And to just look at them as another automaker and assume that they're going to have you know, 5% market share in, in electric vehicles because they'll be one of many is um, uh, shows that you obviously don't understand how much their fans love the product and how superior their products are. Just no concept of it at all. Yep. Yeah, really uh, I, like the the in. I like the way they were steering in, in the uh, documentation for today's call that uh, uh, that they won't need to raise capital. They didn't, they didn't say we don't need to, but they put it plain as day they don't need to. And they right. also didn't say that they're not going to. So like today, if this run-up succeeds uh, and pulls like, say, a Yahoo, they'd be, they'd be probably pretty wise to take some money and... Uh, because once store store it away for a rainy day, exactly. Yeah, just like they yep. doing. Because <clears throat> uh, uh, in the past, when other companies have been listed on the S and P five hundred, and they were like astronomical like this, uh, it, it it evens out in about three months. Is is it's what I'm seeing in people who've done the research. But hey, that's three months that you can make some money while the hay is shining, or make hay while the sun is shining. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and if yeah. there are so many index funds that need to buy, I, I've heard the, the total of 25 million shares that need to be purchased, they could do an equity raise where they're selling directly to some of those um, fund companies so they don't have to buy it at some volatile price on the market. They could give them a, 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 a here's the price over the last, you know, whatever it is, three weeks, here's an average of that, and we'll sell you X million shares at that price. Yeah, and keep things stable for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, another quick story. Uh, Jerome from Tesla, of course, uh, was uh, was uh, interviewed about uh, service expansion. And uh, he said all the right things that uh, Tesla is expanding in share service. Uh, they're looking for uh, different uh, service uh, areas to expand as well as add to in certain metropolitan areas. He even talked uh, specifically about a couple of... Uh, particular uh, metro areas that he uh, put the call out. Hey, if you've got a facility available, we're interested. And uh, Puerto Rico was on the list and uh, Atlanta and a few other metro areas that uh, he talked about specifically. But uh, that, that along with, of course, supercharger expansion, which we talked about in great deal last week, is uh, something that uh, Tesla certainly has to stay on top of. They have to be able to service their current clients and uh, at least uh, in, in the, uh, the words of Jerome, they understand that that is uh, paramount for them to succeed. They have to keep people happy that own the cars with the ever-expanding fleet. And uh, with that ever-expanding fleet, you're going to require more bays and more service centers to open over time in order to service the larger fleet. So, uh, And with, of course, the numbers we saw today or talked about today in vehicle deliveries, there's going to be a little bit of an explosion once we get by this COVID thing, once we get by uh, the, the manufacturing plants are back into full uh, spring, uh, there's going to be even more sales. Uh, records are going to fall. There was a, there was a report earlier in the week about uh, Tesla looking at quarter th three saying that this is going to be, they're trying to make it an all time record. Uh, the largest amount of deliveries that Tesla has ever done is what they're aiming for for next quarter. So, uh, you know, the, the, the pace of cars getting out on the roads and into new customer hands is not slowing down. It's, it's ever increasing, and they're going to have to deal with that with service centers. Yeah, and it just makes sense that you're not going to buy a car if you can't get it serviced somewhat conveniently. So, you know, how close does that have to be? You know, preferably less than 30 miles. And uh, so that, that's going to mean they're going to need a, a lot more service centers. And of course, mobile service helps cover some of that. But uh, you, you have to be able to charge and you have to get service. And, and if you can't get if either one of those is uh, no, you're not likely to buy the car. Yeah. yeah. I like that they called out both in the in the uh, earnings report, too. And, and service has been since the Model 3 came out has been a sore point. And I'm glad to see that they are not just recognizing it, but doing something about it. Because 
um, that is a very easy way to lose potential and repeat customers. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our next story is uh, about a uh, a little documentary film that was done on Giga Nevada. Uh, there's a there's a there's a, a film called uh, Super Factories, and they look at different factories and how they uh, manufacture, what their processes are, and how they uh, how they uh, promote their product and push it out the door through uh, factory innovation. And they had some time at uh, Giga Nevada and were able to film a number of different conveyor systems uh, and battery uh, processing equipment that, uh, to this point, we've never seen before. So uh, we'll have it, of course, in the notes that you can go and watch the, uh, I believe it's about a seven-minute uh, mini film, uh, and you can see uh, some of these uh, different machines and the 2170s moving along conveyor systems and being stacked together and then bricked into uh, into bigger packs and, and modules. Uh, it was quite amazing to, to watch uh, watch the, uh, the, the the little batteries moving across the, the plant in many different places. I was I was I was kind of mesmerized watching just them zipping by. It it, <laughs> uh, it reminded me of the uh, of the the saying it, it wasn't quite this fast, but Elon had said in the past, We'll have to throw a strobe light on the conveyor system so you can actually see the individual items because it's going to be a blur otherwise. <laughs> yep. All yeah. in support of the M3 construction. <laughs> M3, yeah. So M3. I, I, I have three. Model S Pass by. <laughs> yeah, I've heard some of the uh, voiceovers are not 100% accurate. So take Correct. that with a grain of salt when you're watching yeah. it. But still, yeah, yeah. but it's worth <laughs> watching for just for the visuals. Trust me. Yeah, the visuals don't lie, and uh, the it's not even that they're they're wrong with the narration. It's just that like whatever they're narrating is already passed or has isn't on the screen at the time. So they'll say the M3 and the Model S will go by, or they'll say the Model 3 battery, well, M3 battery pack, and it'll be um, like a power pack or power wall battery pack that goes by. <laughs> yeah, yeah so I, I understand. And using the shorthand M3 when you're on a, a, a forum or something dedicated to the Model 3. But if you're talking to the general public, M3 doesn't mean a, a Tesla necessarily. So that right. they, sh- they should be saying Model 3. Uh, it, it doesn't take, it's not that many more syllables. Right, right. <laughs> especially as a documentary. It's not, it's not like yes. it's a uh, They're pressed for time, guys. They had to shorten it down. It was it was a millisecond that they could have put on film for something else. <laughs> Either way, they're not the local news place. They are they're a documentary. They should they should document. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, I think we'll cut it off there. Uh, we've right. obviously gone through a lot of uh, information on the uh, Q2 earnings call, and uh, more will come along. But uh, we thank you for watching this week. Any uh, shout-outs, Mr. Mr. Green? Sure. I've got three new videos up uh, since the last time we all spoke. And you can find them at youtube.com slash Green. That's K-A-C-E-Y-G-R-E-E-N. Uh, recently, I did a... Uh, review of the Farmville Virginia Supercharger today, and uh, then a couple of Tesla software update uh, videos, and I don't even remember everything that went up now. <laughs> There's too much. It's all swimming in his head all at once. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when you were in in Farmville, did you play Stardew Valley just to? <laughs> oh, that would have been that would have been awesome. Uh, uh, <laughs> we played we played Avoid the Plague. Uh, somebody was in there with no mask. Uh, letting out these really terrible coughs, and I was oh like, my gosh, yeah, like, what is what is going through people's heads? Like, I, I I understand the no mask contingent, but when you're coughing, allergies or not, or especially if you don't know what it was, which is probably the case, you, you probably either a shouldn't be out or b should definitely have covered it up. She didn't didn't make a motion to do this or this or to literally just, ah, just, like, just cough out of here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Time to go to another establishment. Absolutely. Run yeah. for the hills. Yeah. That's the best exactly. way to deal with it. Don't, don't argue. Don't fight. Just leave. <laughs> Just leave. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Connor, any parting words from you? Sure. I am with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. You can find us at oeva.org. And I also occasionally blog at carswithcords.net. And if you have a Tesla, you should find your local Tesla Owners Club and uh, get active with them because uh, it's it's a great resource. 
Uh, if you're having some problem, there's probably somebody on there that can help you with it. And uh, it's it's a good community. So enjoy. Yep, yeah, and sharing that experience. Uh, and uh, as Patrick said, if you're experiencing something, I'm sure someone else has already experienced that. And, and you can share that information in that club. That's, that's a great resource for you to have as a test loaner. And uh, with that, if you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't done it already. Thank you, Lee Moon, for the music that we're rolling. And we will talk to you next week. And you can find out what's going on in the Tesla life. Good night, everybody. Stay charged.